Well, I've come out this morning to an area which is rarely photographed. Uh, haven't been here myself for a couple of years. This is up on the Denby Moors in North Wales. Now, it was a, a difficult decision where to go today because the conditions were for very grey skies with a little bit of hazy sun, as you can see behind me. So I opted for this location because I know it's got some quite sort of dramatic layering going on with the forestry. And I've also gone for my 4x5. I want to shoot predominantly black and white. And I've taken a shot. The scene you can see behind me, there is a line of, uh, well, barely visible wind farm up there. And I've shot it with FP4+. Plus. And I've also taken a shot with my 6x12 back on HP5+, Plus to give me a bit more speed. I've decided to predominantly focus on the black and white because it gives that lovely atmospheric look. It's late in the year. Uh, colour, not so much around now. So I'm really playing to the strengths of large format at the moment. Now the metering for this shot is quite straightforward because I'm shooting black and white. I'm not too worried about the highlight values. It's a negative film. It's got a lot of latitude. I have a dark foreground. Uh, the heathers died back months ago. Quite a bright sky. Um, quite a few stops of range, maybe about five or six. Now I'm trying to retain a bit of detail in the foreground. I want the option of bringing up the shadows later. I may not, I may play them down and make them very dark. But if the detail's there, I can bring it out. So take the spot meter reading of the dark heather and I've brought my exposure up two stops from that. So the reading was half a second with FP4+. Plus. So I brought the exposure up to an eighth of a second. So that will place the shadows on a zone three. The highlights are around about a sort of zone seven. Easy to play down, easy to scan with my, uh, my Epson V700. Such a large negative area. It makes it very easy to manipulate later in Lightroom. And one of the nice things about a location like this is in many ways you could be absolutely anywhere. There are no spectacular views, there are no famous images from this location. I don't think I've ever actually seen more than the odd snap of people rallying around here. I uh, think the problem is it's very close to the dramatic locations of Snowdonia and the mountainous region, lakes and all sorts of valleys and uh, woodland and this is a bit overshadowed. But then again, it's only a, an hour from my house. So it's quite a bit closer than the, uh, the Snowdonia area. And being a bit undiscovered, everything you take is somewhat unique. And that's becoming increasingly difficult in this day and age. Well, I've just driven about five minutes around the top of the lake, Limbrenig, and I've come across a lovely scene you can see behind me. Now, the light is absolutely ideal for black and white work. It's so moody and atmospheric. This is better than I could have ever hoped for. So I've set my camera up again. And I'm going for a wide angle shot, but I've used the 6x12 back because I think the panoramic format creates more impact. I don't want too much foreground and I don't want too much sky but I do want that lovely ribbon of the lake in there and that's what I've got with a 6x12 so I've taken about three or four frames because the light's changing rapidly. HP5 plus. I've used a yellow filter for the last couple of shots just to boost the sky slightly because there is a touch of blue in there. I think this is really going to work well.
Okay, after a short break, I've wreckied another area down further down the lake. And after about an hour walking around, excluding the obvious shots, because there are some posts running into the water, all that sort of cliched stuff, I found myself a little viewpoint out towards a bird hide, which is situated over my right shoulder. A bit distant really there, but uh, I've seen some nice compositions there especially ones that will work with the 6x12, even one in the vertical format. So I'm going to head over there and get set up again. Well, the light's changing very rapidly where I am now, so I've had to grab a couple of frames very quickly with the 6x12 back. I've put my longest lens on, the 240mm, give myself a very nice horizontal crop in on the scene. Shot it at f16 because I've got no issues with depth of field. I didn't even actually need to use a dark cloth. The, uh, the lens is pretty bright, I'm in shade, and the scene is well illuminated, so yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, the light, though, has gone a bit worse. And I've also got uh, quite a bit of movement on the surface of the water and there's rain on the horizon so I am going to hang on, cover my gear up and just see if I can get another shot. have driven about two or three minutes back to the original parking space but on the way back in the car I had a fabulous view down the lake the layering of the little islands headlands and the background with the forests and the light were fantastic now it wasn't safe to park so I did end up having to make a decision to yomp back about 15 minutes but I think this is going to be well worth it Okay, for this shot, I have put my longest lens on again. Now, it's only a 240mm, which is about mm, 70 millimeter equivalent. I wish I'd brought my 300mm, to be honest. It would have given me a little bit more pull on the scene. I've got a little bit too much each side, but having said that, with the 6x12 image, that crop looks very, very nice indeed. Now, I did take one shot with a yellow filter, because there's a little bit of blue sky in there. That's just going to darken the blue sky a little bit. Had there been a lot more sky showing through, I think I might have used an orange to get that drama, but that would considerably darken my foreground as well, so I have to be careful there, don't block that up. Uh, wind conditions, pretty good, probably about six, seven mile an hour wind, so not too much movement on the bellows. If it's too windy, these cameras do act like a sail and they blow around. And the two films I've used are Roly 400 infrared, without the infrared filter, and HP 5 Plus in the roll film back. I've got a choice there of images at different times when the light was moving around and hopefully, uh, if everything goes well, one of them is going to give me that lovely dramatic classic landscape scene. So this is one of my, one of my uh, favourite shots of the day I think, uh, I've really got my fingers crossed for this one and a uh, pretty good way to wrap things up. Mm -hmm. 